Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. I'm sitting up here on my balcony because I'm able to set up my uh, Orion ED80 telescope. That's a little 80 millimeter telescope, but has a powerful lens. It's a triplet. And I haven't been able to use the balcony before because I can't polar align because looking to the north, I'm looking right into the house. So there was no way of polar aligning this telescope until Nina came along with the three point polar alignment. Now I'm sure there's other programs that perhaps can uh, do a polar alignment looking in the southern sky or the western sky or the eastern sky. However, those are the only portions of the sky I can see from up here on the balcony. Right now I want to show you the um, three-point polar alignment. I'm looking to the south right now as you can see uh, on the picture here. I have it in, in and around the area of Jupiter and so it's on the ecliptic. So let's do a three-point polar alignment from the balcony here. Let's go full screen. Let's go to um, three-point alignment and let's uh, let's manual mode off. Start from current position. I want that on. All right. Otherwise, it'll it'll slew to the north and I can't see the north from the balcony. So I can only see the southern half of the sky. So let's hit go since I'm looking at the southern half of the sky. So it's going to take its first picture and do a, a um, plate solve, found it. It's going to take a second picture and do a plate solve for reference and solved it. All right, now it's doing the third point and it's going to tell me how much I'm off. Let's see. All right, it's doing its calculation and I'm off a little bit by the altitude. 11 minutes. The uh, azimuth is only off by one minute. So let's uh, let's move it a little bit. I want to move to the east and I want to move it up a little bit. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that right now. Now I got some clouds coming in. And within a minute that's pretty close. Well, azimuth looks pretty good. Altitude is off just a little bit. Let's move it up just a little bit more. That's going to change the azimuth too, but uh, we'll try it. All right, we'll keep it at that. That looks pretty good. Good enough for what I need. And there's the polar alignment, supposedly anyway, looking toward the south, southwest actually. I'm happy with this. I've been watching Joe Navarro's YouTube channel and uh, Joe's astro photos, astro photography, astro photos. I think it's astro photos. <laughs> It, it, there's there's the link right there and it, it, he was talking about the Pleiades uh, how he was uh, shooting the Pleiades and he, he he saw something that caught his eye and uh, Chuck Ayub also caught it and, and, and mentioned it on his YouTube channel and it's a galaxy I think it's UGC 2832 uh, there's the number right there oh and speaking of Joe Navarra I got my NASA cap on, Joe. You see that? Yes, sir. Uh, anyway, I wanted to get this galaxy. I wanted to see if I can get the galaxy. So I was playing around with the, the, uh, the Pleiades with the Eon 130 millimeter telescope. I took the um, uh, reducer off and put it back in its natural state of F7. And, but to get the entire nebula, I had to do two panel. Uh, and once again, I did that from Nina. I did a two panel uh, mosaic and then I stitched them together in Photoshop. And uh, I'm amazed at the clarity. Now, I think this was a six hour image, but anyway, actually three hours, uh, three hours for each panel. And uh, there it is. <laughs> Look at that. The uh, galaxy uh, there on the upper, off to the right of the upper portion of the Pleiades, that galaxy is about 300 million light years away. 
Can you imagine that? That galaxy is about 300 million light years away. And I, I thought, well, let's see what it looks like in the narrow band. So I tried it looking at the uh, 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 nebulosity, uh, the Pleiades, in the uh, uh, hydrogen alpha. Now, I was very disappointed. Uh, but I did look at it in the luminance with the uh, black and white camera, the uh, 1600, the ASI 1600. And off to the right of the uh, first galaxy, I found another galaxy. It looks like it's even further away, perhaps 350 million light years away. But anyway, there you have it uh, with that. So, you know, a lot of things going on right now. And tonight, um, as I'm uh, recording this video, uh, the moon will be eclipsed. And uh, I'll be able to see it here in Savannah. However, there's clouds up in the sky right now, and uh, I might be interfered with that. I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. Uh, it should peak out about four o'clock in the morning or the maximum eclipse. It's almost gonna be a total uh, lunar eclipse at 97% uh, eclipse. Um, hopefully I'll have a picture of that or several pictures of the moon eclipsed uh, at the end of this video. Images. I want to show you a few things I've been working on. Uh, just last night through the clouds, I was able to get just 20 minutes worth of the Horsehead Nebula. And it, it came out pretty good for 20 minutes. Now, one of the things about this is the processing software that I've been using. I was watching Luke of uh, Luke Omatica, uh, his uh, website, or uh, YouTube channel, rather. And uh, he's talking about a uh, software program called Topaz, and it's called, uh, AI denoise. So I, I looked at it and I said, you know, that looks pretty interesting. So I'm going to try it. Well, yeah, I tried it and I liked it so much I bought it. And let me show you some of the results from this thing. It's amazing how much clearer I can get an image by using this software and it connects directly into my Photoshop. So I can edit straight from Photoshop into the Topaz uh, denoise uh, software. And uh, you know, look at the examples here, you know, going from one to the next. Here, here it is before and here it is after. See how much cleaner it is? Well, anyway, I've been using that so uh, helping with some of my process and getting a little bit clearer image, particularly in that background noise, uh, which is always a problem for us. And to Luke in England, cheers! Mm. But uh, other projects I've been looking at is are the uh, uh, different uh, 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 objects coming up in the eastern sky now over, uh, uh, over in the eastern sky after midnight and particularly in the Orion area. There's a lot of activity. I just showed you the, the Horsehead Nebula but also, uh, I want to show you the, uh, the Rosette Nebula. Uh, I've been working on that in uh, uh, narrow band. And also, I've um, been looking at another project, uh, of course, <laughs> The Orion Nebula. Everybody has to see the Orion Nebula. And for beginner uh, astronomers uh, and astrophotographers, this is the best thing to start working on uh, other than the moon. But uh, the Orion Nebula is just, it's an amazing uh, type of uh, deep space object. Actually, it's not all that deep. It's relatively close at about a thousand and a half light years away. Uh, but anyway, you got the Orion Nebula, you got the Horsehead Nebula, you got the Rosette Nebula, all in that area of Orion. There's you know, a lot of nebulosity uh, even between these targets. Uh, so, you know, give that a try. Well, it's morning and I had a little bit of sleep. I got my coffee now to get me going, but I was able to get the eclipse. And I had to fight for it because I had a lot of clouds passing across the uh, region throughout the night. But the sky did clear during the maximum portion of the eclipse right there at 402 in the morning. So, I'm very pleased with that. And, uh, uh, I got just about the entire eclipse going from the beginning to the maximum. So enjoy the pictures and again, thanks for watching. So I rambled on quite a bit for this one, but uh, uh, remember the heavens are filled with majestic glories. Oh man, they're just loaded with majestic glories all over the place. Anyway, I hope you have a chance to get out and look at the uh, sky. Uh, hopefully you got a, a, a view of the lunar eclipse if you're in North America. And uh, uh, you know, the winter time is coming and the sky is just filled with all these wonders and all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, Clear skies, everyone.
um, Joe Navarro's. Navarro's up. Uh, what? Uh, you know, I've, I've been watching Joe Navarro's uh, YouTube. What am I to say? Website. <laughs> Three, two, one. I've been watching Joe Navarro's. Uh, I did it again. Website. Three, two, one. Well, it's now morning, and I have my coffee to go with it. I'm away. Three, two. Well, it's morning, and I'm awake finally. 